untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a black green mid range deck titled Snow and Seven, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring Ren and Seven, the new planeswalker from Midnight Hunt, starts out at 5 loyalty, and usually we're going to use the minus 3 ability right away, creating a green tree folk creature token with reach and power and toughness each equal to the number of lands we control. So this will be great on turn 5, but gets even better as the game goes on. Then plus 1 is a great way to grow the tree folk as we get to reveal the top 4 cards of our library and put all land cards revealed this way into our hand and the rest goes into our graveyard. The zero ability puts any number of land cards from our hand onto the battlefield tapped if we just want to grow the tree folk after using the plus 1 a few times. And then the minus 8 if we can get to it returns all permanent cards from our graveyard to our hand and we get an emblem saying we don't have a maximum hand size for the rest of the game. So very powerful Planeswalker that also combines very nicely with a Seekas Chariot, not that it needs any help already, one of the best cards in standard. The 4 mana legendary artifact vehicle is a 4-4 with a crew cost of 4, that when it enters the battlefield is joined by a pair of 2-2 green cat creature tokens, and when the chariot attacks we create a token that's a copy of target token we control. So this deck is capable of curving a Seekas Chariot into Ren and Seven, make the giant tree folk token, crew the chariot with that token, and then chariot attacks making another copy of that same tree folk token, which is an incredibly powerful curve. So to help us in our quest of curving chariot into Ren and Seven, we do have a little bit of acceleration to start out with two copies of Neverwinter Dried, a 1-1 that can be sacrificed for two mana to search our library for a basic forest and put it on the battlefield tapped, as well as the full playset of Sculptor of Winter, a 2-2 elf rogue that can tap to untap target Snowland, and the entirety of our mana base except for two copies of Lair of the Hydra consists of snow lands with nine snow-covered swamps and nine snow-covered forests, four woodland chasms and two copies of Faceless Haven as an extra creature land to join Lair of the Hydra to give the deck a nice late game against more controlling strategies. So going Dryad into Sacrifice at turn 2, or Sculpture allows us to potentially play turn 3 Chariot into a turn 4 run and 7 and start copying those Tree Folk tokens. Then rounding out the deck, we've got a bit of interaction with two copies of Infernal Grasp, destroying a creature at the cost of two life at instant speed, as well as two copies of Soul Shatter, making the opponent sacrifice a creature or planeswalker with the highest mana value among creatures and planeswalkers they control. So a great answer to Goldspan Dragon, as we can remove it without giving the opponent any treasure tokens if we can play it at instant speed. Then we also have two copies of Cram Session to gain for life and learn, allowing us to grab a sideboard card with the lesson type line, so we've got an environmental sciences which can help us find an extra land and gain two life. Necrotic fumes as removal that can maybe pair with our cat tokens or the tokens we generate from our mascot exhibition. We've got two copies of the seven mana sorcery, which also pairs nicely with our Isika's chariot, allowing us to make more of those 4 4 elemental tokens. Then we've got a Containment Breach to answer artifacts or enchantments, we've got Introduction to Prophecy for card draw, and finally Confront the Past to answer opposing Planeswalkers or get back our Ren and Seven from the Graveyard. Then we've got the full playset of a Briar Bridge Tracker as another exciting addition from Midnight Hunt, a 2-3 Human Scout with Vigilance that when it enters the battlefield investigates, creating a clue token which we can sacrifice for 2 mana to draw a card, so it's an extra token we can also potentially copy with our Isika's Chariot, giving us more card advantage. And then the tracker gets plus 2 plus 0 as long as we control a token, so that can be the clue token that the tracker generates, or it could be one of the other tokens like the ones from Isika's Chariot or Mascot Exhibition, and even the Tree Folk from Ren and Seven, so it's often going to be a 4-powered creature that still generates some card advantage. Then we also have two copies of Field Trip to help us ramp, searching up a basic forest to put on the battlefield tapped, and also allowing us to learn, giving us 4 ways total in the main deck to grab or sideboarded lessons. Then we've got the full playset of Binding the Old Gods as more interaction, destroying target non-land permanent and opponent controls on the first chapter, and then helping us ramp searching up a forest on the second chapter. Doesn't specify basic forest, so we can even get our Woodland Chasm, which will also fix for black mana. And then on the final chapter our creatures gain Death Touch, maybe allowing our cat tokens to attack past larger creatures. 
And then topping off our curve, we've got two copies of Blood on the Snow, allowing us to destroy all creatures or all planeswalkers, and then returning a creature or planeswalker card with mana value X or less from our graveyard to the battlefield, where X is the amount of snow mana spent to cast it, and with this many snow lands, that's usually going to be 5 or 6, allowing us to get back Renan 7, or even Vorinclex Monstrous Raider, the 6-6 six, six Legendary Phyrexian Praetor with Trample and Haste, that essentially halves the amount of counters the opponent gets on their permanence, while doubling hours, so great at stopping opposing planeswalkers while allowing us to ultimate Ren and Seven the turn we play them, and also great with Sagas, allowing us to go to the second chapter right away while stopping opposing Sagas from working altogether. And then the mana base, as we discussed, very important to have these creature lands in the more grinding matchups, and thanks to all the extra lands we're searching up between Binding the Old Gods, Field Trip, and Neverwinter Dried, we can often sink a lot of mana into a big Lair of the Hydra to help us end the game. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. Uh, very land light hands, but we do have Sculptor to get us to track her. And then hopefully we can pick up a few lands along the way. Facing off against the green-whites. And a turn to Root Grazer, so they could be on the Festival deck. Also playing Chariots and... Run and seven. So having a turn to accelerant is important, and being on the play, of course, also relevant. But Vorinclex is quite effective since the green white deck doesn't have much removal. This can stop an opposing Run and seven from being very impactful, as well as maybe the uh, four mana enchantment followed our retreat. Opponent could also have Yasharn, which does prevent us from cracking clue tokens. Although they probably would have played that last turn if that was the case. So do we see Ren and Seven make an appearance? It's gonna be a Skyclave Apparition instead. Exiling the tracker, that's fine. Still got our clue token, and if Apparition dies, we get our 3 3 token back as well. Now, don't feel great about playing Ren and then only having the token back as a blocker, because that means the opponent can finish off my Planeswalker. Plus, if we wait until after Voring Clex, we can get double the loyalty, which sounds fun. So instead, we'll just play Tracker and crack a clue token. And we'll see how that sequencing works out for us. One problematic card potentially is Cute Swarm, but they didn't have it here, otherwise they would have played it before playing the land. Our best answer to Skewed Swarm is to draw blood on the snow pretty much. Once they start going too wide, it's pretty difficult to uh, answer the board. Even if we're making very large tree folk tokens, they can just chump those forever. So there's Ren and Seven from the opponents. Now Vorinclex doesn't have a good attack, but uh, still seems worth playing. Ooh, and a Chariot too. So many options. But I think it's Vorinclex time. And then we just gotta go bigger with our Renan 7. Trefolk attacks, we'll take it. Uh, 
and using the plus one on Ren, not actually adding any loyalty thanks to Vorinclex. They did mill over Storm the Festival, which is quite good. And now Angel Warrior tokens from Himeria's Call, also quite effective, as that can pressure our life total. But we can make a large tree folk. So as fun as it is to minus eight, I'm gonna make a tree folk here. And then probably better to crack a clue as opposed to playing dryads. All right, then a storm the festival in hands. Opponent finds another run in seven, but gonna come into play with two loyalty. So it didn't actually accomplish much. And then Asika's chariot's about to make some tokens, so that is scary with the tree folk token in play. So we're gonna need some good top decks, since at the moment our opponent's gonna pull ahead, eventually flashing back Storm the Festival as well. The good news is that we still have a run and seven on seven loyalty. Let's crack our clue. Field trip can find an answer to the chariot as well. Alright, so I think I'm making another tree folk for now. And then I could field trip, get containment breach for chariot. Or I could just play my own chariot, which also seems reasonable. And then at that point I might want to get Necrotic Fumes for Ren and Seven so they can't keep finding lands with it. Sure. Because at the end of the day, while Chariot can copy a Tree Folk, it's only going to do that once. Yeah, Vorinclex is an effective mirror breaker and the decks playing Storm the Festival usually don't have it since it's a six drop where Storm the Festival only finds five or less. But as I mentioned, Scute Swarm still potentially a threat. And if our opponent can make enough angels, I guess that could be problematic too. And the arrow opponent is going to throw in the towel here. Foreign Clank too strong, and our Ren and Seven is just going to take over the game for us. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty nice hand. Got our field trip to maybe set up turn four Ren and Seven. And Foreign Clank always fun with Planeswalkers. Opponent on blue green, turn two sculptures, nice. And then what to get with field trip is another interesting question. At this point, I'm kind of liking playing the chasm tapped here to guarantee run and seven next turn. And then against blue green, could be an epiphany 
run on 7 deck. Could get Necrotic Fumes, could get Confront the Past, which can also get back my own run on 7 in case it gets countered. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Also binding another answer as well. Alright, Innkeeper. Make a treasure. Into Dryad, that's fine. So we can resolve our Planeswalker. With a 2-2 on defense in addition to the Tree Folk. Playing Vorinclex first, also a reasonable path of action here, as that will nerf an opposing Renan 7. The reason I didn't like Innkeeper in the deck is that it, unlike the Sculptor, doesn't allow you to curve Chariot into Renan 7, since you're going to be out of a treasure. So I preferred sticking to actual mana creatures and Neverwinter Dried. Okay, so... Feels like Vorinclex is somewhat likely to get countered here. Although it could also just be a divide by zero, which I'm not too afraid of. Could also just go tracker. Although I guess if her opponent counters, they cannot sack the Dryad. So maybe it is still worth it to Vorinclex. And then I guess we'll use Sculptor to play Lair of the Hydra as opposed to playing the untapped land. Jory Disruption, I guess, would have been a reason to play the untapped land first. But yeah, there's a divide by zero, so at least Riot can get sacrificed. And uh, we'll play the lair here and pass. Science says to hit her land drops. So they do find themselves in kind of an awkward spot. Especially if they're playing their own run and seven with Voring Clicks being a pretty great answer to it. Okay. So now. What's my play? How much mana do I have available? Six, seven, eight potentially. So I can play a tap lands. Attack with my Tree Folk, just to see what our opponent does. If they jump with a Dryad and sacrifice it, then we don't have to worry about counter spells as much. Alright. So I could go Chariot plus Tracker, or I could just play Vorinclex. If they have Cyclone Summoner to bounce everything, then it doesn't really matter. Could even destroy their treasure token with Binding as another line of play. But uh, this is probably plussing. And then I guess we'll go with Chariot plus Tracker. So we can make use of the haste on Foreign Clex next turn. Not too worried about an opposing Renan 7 with this board presence and a confront a past and binding in hand. Alright, so they did have Cyclone Summoner, so it didn't matter. I guess the best line against Cyclone Summoner would have been to just crack the clue as opposed to playing the chariots. But that's fine. So I want to kill the summoner if possible. And then I can still add a chariot to the board to set up Renan 7, copy the token next turn. So the Exiled card, probably Epiphany, waiting for a good window of opportunity. And yeah, there it is, so not a great Epiphany with no board presence, but maybe they can chain together a few of those. Alright, Coma's a good one.
to have Soul Shatter as a clean answer, but not in hand. And then if we can learn, we could also get Necrotic Fumes, which exiles the Serpent. Just making some huge tree folk could be fine with the chariots. Or I could wait until next turn to get Death Touch and then make that play. And then for now, could still make a huge tree folk. And play Tracker. So I'm gonna put a stop so I can accrue the chariot in response to the third chapter of Binding. So the chariot itself will also have Death Touch. Memory Deluge to go digging for cards. Double innkeeper, sure. Right, Koma's gonna try and pressure our planeswalker, perhaps. That's okay, we can get it back with Confronta Pasts. So these two are going face. Yeah, I could uh, crew the chariot here to block the serpent token. Yeah, that gets tapped, that's fine. And then, do I want to chump? Yeah, sure. Alright, so they get a token. Gain some life. And then we want to draw. And then now we'll crew the chariots with the tracker, I guess. Give that death touch for what it's worth. And if they use the serpent from Koma to prevent this chariot attack, we can kill Koma with binding. So play a lands. And then I could even play Vorinclex if I wanted to. Although then I can no longer confront a past back run and seven. So let's just attack with what we currently have. All right, trade is fine. Possible they have a backup coma, which is why they're okay giving up the serpent here. And then confront the past back run in seven. Although it's also tempting to uh Get Vorinclex in play first. Actually, let's plus here. Already have a tree folk on defense, and this is better in case of a cyclone summoner. Alright, flashback. Memory Deluge can dig very deep, but they're gonna need the help.
opponent foretells what is presumably Epiphany. Alright, so... They do have a lot of mana next turn, so they can potentially Epiphany and play another impactful card in the same turn. But uh, we can also apply a lot of pressure here. And then what to do with Ren? I'm not sure yet. We'll see what the opponent does. That's fine. Opponent's at three. And then I guess we can just keep plussing, adding a lot of loyalty, thanks to Vorinclex. Not afraid of decking. And then I guess I'll crack the clue now, see what else we pick up. Soul Shatter is great to keep up for an opposing coma before they can make any tokens with it. Opponent needs another Cyclone Summoner, pretty much. Yeah, there it is. So, sure, that happens. And a Dryad. So, do I want a Soul Shatter now? Yeah, opponent has seen enough, even with an extra turn here. We've just got too much stuff for them to work through. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. So we're looking at Sculptor into Tracker. Opponent blue-black, so shaping up to be a grindy matchup, although never mind Scab pointing towards a zombie tribal deck. Sculptor, of course, at its best if it's ramping into turn 3 Chariot. Or a turn 4 run and 7. So... Yeah, I'll play a tracker attack for two. Tracker just awesome in pretty much every matchup. A good blocker against aggro decks, can apply pressure against control. And always leaves behind a little clue token. So how do we feel about playing our Planeswalker? Can make a token, let's say they kill the token, then it's not fully protected. So there is an argument for using two removal spells here and then next turn playing the Planeswalker. Can still hit with Tracker. And we can punish the block here. So I wanna Infernal Grasp the other scab. Could have also let the trade happen and then play Ren and Seven. Right, pawn going for Plum the Forbidden instead. Slightly unexpected. That's alright. Yeah, even if we trade a Tracker for one Scab and then use a Sculptor to ramp out Renan 7, removal on the Tree Folk could still let them finish off the Planeswalker with the other Scab. So the choice here is going to be whether to crack the Clue or Soul Shatter something. Alright, if they're going for Kicked Thirst, I feel pretty good about cracking the Clue. And then play a run and seven on a pretty much uncontested board. And even have a chariot. Do we play chariot first now? Yeah, it is tempting. 
No, I think I should still play run first. If there is a sweeper in our future, being able to repopulate with a chariot is quite nice. And in the meantime, we get to plus run a few times, find more lands. The Narfi can pump the ghasts, but not enough to do anything significant. Plus. And Field Trip could get an Exile base removal spell for Narfi with the uh, Necrotic Fumes, which sounds appealing. And then I can even sacrifice my Dryads. And our opponent's gonna pack it in here. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a nice opening hand. Some early removal and then double tracker to protect our Renan 7. Opponent black whites with turn 2 aspirants. Put a stop so we can kill Aspirin before it distributes a counter in case they play another creature. Although I think I want to kill Valkyrie here. As opposed to the Aspirin, although it is close because Renan 7 of course makes a Reach creature. It's If they kill the Reach creature, Valkyrie can pressure. But at the same time, Aspirin's probably going to grow larger than the Tracker. So maybe it's still worth it to kill the Aspirin here. Sculptor allows me to ramp into Renan 7, so that might be worth it. Not the most mana efficient play. Alright, second Valkyrie. So removal on our Tree Folk token would be bad news, but I think we gotta go for it. And then next turn we can double track her. Cleric of Life spawns. Yeah, up to 29, that also does the job. So the decision of killing Aspirant over Valkyrie coming back to bite us. So... Probably just double track her and then... Uh, Next turn, Dryad can grow the uh, Tree Folk one more. So we'll have a 7-7 seven, seven Tree Folk token. See, fine to trade for the cleric. Cram session might keep me alive. And then I could get necrotic fumes. Although if I cast the Necrotic Fumes, I wouldn't be uh, sacrificing the Dryad, although maybe that's okay since that's going to shrink down the opponent's team as well. And then I think I would rather have the Dryad available as opposed to Sculptor of Winter, is that true? Maybe not, maybe I just uh, sacrifice the Dryad.
And now our tree folk is big enough to block Valkyrie at least. Still dead to removal. And a professor. And the upside of keeping Sculptor is that we can maybe cast a Blood on the Snow if we top deck it, which would be quite strong here. Put on getting Academic Probation to remove a blocker next turn. So pretty much have to top deck a Blood on the Snow. And maybe there's some other outs I'm not thinking of right now. Swamp's not going to do it. And I think that leaves us pretty dead. I can animate Faceless Haven, but uh, opponent can remove a blocker, so that's not enough to survive. Trifo can block. And the only instant speed removal spell I could draw is Infernal Grasp, which is also going to cost me two life to play it, so... Pretty dead here. Alright, and they had the Vanishing Verse anyways, too. Otherwise, I still could have technically blocked with two creatures. Crack a clue, but for one mana, there's nothing we can draw here. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and our hand has a lot of potential here. With turn one, Neverwinter Dryad, turn two, sacrifice it. So we just need some untapped lands to curve into Chariot and run and seven. Get our one damage in. Opponents are red so far. On black red. Thermal Alchemist, okay. And drew double chasm here, so might be unable to play Ren and Seven next turn. But a uh, binding is still a reasonable second option. Alchemists, pings for one, so there's gonna be a removal spelling coming here. Neonates rush. Fair enough. Alright, let's kill the Alchemists. And Crew Chariot. And then next turn we can double up on our tree folk, hopefully. Thirst on our token is a pretty painful way to go about it. So they'll need some sort of sweeper. Although with four mana in black red, that's gonna be tough. Shadow's verdict is five. Alright, opponent's gonna try it the hard way. And an adversary. So they can finish off Renan seven. But they're forced to stay back. Otherwise they're just dead. So we'll plus. And then K 
can uh, play the tracker to crew chariots, attack with all, copy the tree folk, and that's pretty much game over. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This is potentially an awesome hand. If we can find land number four. And if the sculptor survives. Our opponent on a Lunark Veteran deck, so it could be a life gain synergy deck. Typically doesn't pack too much removal, as we see Expedition Healer, Lifelink Vigilance. Unicorns, okay. They will have some large creatures of their own. But, uh... Chariots into Renan 7 is still a powerful curve. So I'm okay if the cap tokens die. Just gotta keep the chariot itself alive. Another veteran. So the Unicorn is large enough to attack past our two cats, as well as maybe even our Tree Folk token, but we've got backup copies of Renan 7, so I'm okay if they finish off my Planeswalker. Also, that's one scary Unicorn right there. Probably have to jump with one cat. And then Chariot can attack. Opponent does go for the trade. That's fine. So the Unicorn now is scary 10-9. Can still jump with an extra cat if needed. Intrepid adversary. Can pump the team by one as well. Alright, Unicorn can finish off Ren, that's fine. If I didn't have another land to play, I might have taken a slightly different approach. And then. Probably best to keep Sculptor untapped, just in case. Make another Tree Folk. This time I'm probably okay throwing the Cat Token under the bus. And we're just waiting for removal for Unicorn, which the field trip also represents with the Necronic Fumes. And once the Unicorn is dealt with, we should be able to take over. Alrighty, so I'll start by plussing. And field trip gets forest and necrotic fumes. Take out the unicorn. Goodbye, sculpture. And I don't think it's quite time to start attacking, but probably next turn we can turn the corner. Can minus run to make an extra tree folk token, play back up.
I also kind of like the idea of using the zero ability and put three lands in play. Just to pump my team. And then I'll still have a Lair of the Hydra as a chum blocker if needed. And attack for 30. Opponent's jumping. Alright, another unicorn. This one's more manageable. And then, yeah, our opponent's in trouble here. Not sure if I would have made an extra tree folk or kept plusing to find more lands, but with a land drop available, I guess minusing is fine. And then there's still some creature lands we get to use as well. All right, sweet. So we get to see our black green snow deck in action. Got to make plenty of tree folk tokens, even copy them with chariot, and double our loyalty thanks to Vorinclex. So we kind of checked off all the boxes here. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.